Hey friends, I'm Itama Metal Love. I love you. Just wanted to make this quick video for you about my uh, success map that I've created today. Um, I have to say, uh, I, 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 I'm pretty sure the uh, inspiration is from uh, my best friend Kelly Obama. Um, she, um, she's been doing this. I, I did one a little while ago, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I got initially the idea from her, and she's definitely just finished one so thank you for uh, showing me how to do this uh, so what this is is uh, a way of mapping out my life so that um, I can achieve what I really want in my life um, and my goals here are well-being and peace it's the most important thing in my life and it's the most important thing in your life and it or at least it should be is your well-being and peace your map might not look exactly like mine it might look different um, but I want to kind of talk about what's included in mind so you can get some ideas and uh, I would really love if you shared your success map, uh, happiness map, whatever it is with me. Maybe you can uh, add me on Facebook and send me a, uh, a picture of it. So it's Amitabha Metta Love. So I'm going to go through this um, quickly here. Um, so I'll go through each of the bubbles and I'll explain as I go along, why I've written down these these things. Um, so any upset or wanting is a form of anxiety and a call to practice. So anytime I've had upset, I know that there's always some sort of wanting. Um, or it, it, it has some undercurrent of dissatisfaction. And when there's dissatisfaction, there's always a wanting for it to be different. And even if it's a shutting down, shutting out the world kind of thing, uh, it's wanting the present moment to be different than it is. Uh, it could be wanting somebody to be in your life in a romantic way, um, and that's not happening, and so it steals your peace. You, you, you don't. Nothing steals it. You, you sell it, um, and. Uh, it could be wanting to have a certain place to live. And you're not happy with your current arrangement. It could be um, you're in a re relationship and you're not happy with it and you want it to be different. And sometimes you do need to make changes. I'm not saying that you should just simply go ahead and accept everything in your life um, and not make changes. But um, on the foundational level, you should. You know, On the level of uh, my own personal happiness. Even if you do need to make external changes in your life, you, you know, we need to find... The way of um, you know accepting everything exactly as it is right here in the present moment, so that we can really be happy. Um, so if I'm having anxiety already, um, I know that it, it uh, it's been hard for me to catch it sometimes because I'll have uh, anxious thoughts, uh, thoughts of worry, thoughts of uh, paranoia or um, fear or insecurity or just a lot of thoughts uh, and racing thoughts and it just it seems unusual um, but when I'm in it it's hard to catch it so this is why I'm writing these things down so I can you know realize them more and I've been doing a lot better with it um, so what I can do to get out of that is is to laugh I can I have to eat food because I find again and again when I don't eat enough food I have anxiety and People that have anxiety tend to skip breakfast. Um, having tea, meditating, doing yoga, and using magnesium. I made this magnesium spray. This is one I bought, but it smells like stinky feet. So I actually I bought some magnesium chloride flakes and made my own. Um, and it's awesome. Um, eating a big breakfast and meditating and drinking my Tulsi tea, my holy basil, really, really helps with anxiety. These are things that support my life and really create a strong foundation. Laughing every day intentionally is very, very important. I did it in my last, one of my last videos was about uh, yoga therapy, so I encourage you to watch that. Um, and how laughing really releases the same type of, uh, it, give, it gives your body and mind the same type of release as crying does. So when you cry, you're, you're upset. <laughs> and uh, when you're laughing, you're like, <laughs> So you notice it's very, very similar sound, and it's the, uh, virtually the same. It's rhythmic exhales, short rhythmic exhales, 
uh, have a way of releasing emotions in your body. So if you laugh, even if there's nothing funny, you just laugh. <laughs> or you just go, he, 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 ho, 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 he, he, he. It will have a way of releasing, uh, at least just uh, digging up some of, of the emotions and letting it kind of just get out of you, you know. Uh, it, it's it's an exhale as well. So you're exhaling sound, you're exhaling uh, air, and, and it just has the same type of effect. Um, the way the brain works is, uh, you know, for example, if you smile, even if you're not happy, if you make... The, this face, especially if you smile with your eyes, the brain thinks that you're happy and then you'll start to feel happy. So laughing every day and smiling every day, very, very important to me. Uh, five minutes of oming, uh, really, really good for my life. Uh, when I've been doing it consistently, I feel really good. It creates a consistent unified vibration in my body um, and it creates some peace and concentration. It helps my concentration as well which is very important for meditation and mindfulness. Exercising and walking every day, very important to get those endorphins flowing, uh, to feel strong and to regenerate the body, which I'm working on right now. Um, mindfulness of breathing and metta meditation are my foundational spiritual practices. Mindfulness of breathing is just watching the breath all day long and in meditation. And uh, metta is sending out loving kindness to every cell, every ounce of your being, and then projecting that to all beings. And it's so wonderful. Uh, it has helped stop horrific nightmares I was having uh, and helped me to just stabilize my life and increase my compassion for others. Um, reading and watching the Dhamma. So Dhamma talks, I follow the Buddhist path, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> and... Um, these are reminders in my life. Um, so I really benefit from watching and reading the Dhamma and listening to the Dhamma. So, um, I really know that if you want to have, uh, consistency in your life, you have to have consistent thoughts, consistent teachings. And, um, I have found through my own practice in my own life, being a vegan, um, educating myself about veganism and the health benefits of being a vegan and how plant-based diet can reverse and cure disease uh, constantly helps me stay on the path and reading and watching the Dhamma helps me do that with my Buddhist practice as well and stay on, on the cushion with my meditation practice. Um, gratitude journal. I'm actually going to do it, Bamalu. I'm going to create a gratitude journal. I've had some hang-ups about it in the past. I thought it was something that girls do. Uh, that's kind of a ridiculous thought. Um, so I'm, I'm going to buy a gratitude journal tonight. I'm going to start every day uh, in the morning and night before I go to bed. I'm going to write a little entry. Um, just three things. I think it'll be three, but you know, at least one thing every day I'm going to write uh, something I'm grateful for. And it could it could be someone too, um, and that's fine. It, it's just creating and and uh, documenting gratitude so I can look back at it, and so I also cultivate that and make sure that I'm cultivating it consciously in my life. And the last one here, which is last but not least for sure, is uh, 30 minutes of meditation practice every single day. I have found when I do about a thousand minutes a month. Now it might be different for you, but for me. I need to do a certain amount of meditation. Um, I will show you uh, quickly my little meditation graph, and I want to kind of uh, elucidate a point to you. Um, I have found again and again when there are dips in my meditation that there are dips in my life, in the stability of my emotions, um, even my physical life and my work life, my relationships. So you can see here, oh, hold on a second. Um, I was fairly consistent over here, uh, about a thousand minutes a month, and then I did a meditation retreat, and then I dropped off for three months in a row, about half of the meditation, and during that time, I completely lost myself, I completely lost my peace, gradually became very depressed, and I have found that meditation, consistent meditation every single day, um, really provides a a buffer in my life and helps me kind of surf the vicissitudes of life instead of being knocked over by the waves. It allows me to get on top of it and and um, and, and just have a foundation for peace. 
the most important thing in your life is your peace. There is nothing more important. Not your loved ones, um, not your health even. Uh, your peace is the most important thing in your life. This well-being peace uh, map is something I've created for myself. And if you want to share it with me, add me to Facebook. It's Amitabha Metalove. I'd happy, be happy to have more friends on there if you want to be friends. Um, and share with me a picture of your of your map. You know, I, I really love to see it. Um, I want to say thank you, Bamalu, for for uh, inspiring me so much in my life. Um, and, uh, you know, you've been so wonderful to uh, encourage me in my spiritual practice. And I can't thank you enough. So thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for watching my videos over the years and supporting me and getting the encouragement and, uh, and the teachings from me also. And I'm s I've been so grateful that I've been able to help uh, many of you. Um, so I really would love to hear how you're doing. Um, share with me. And uh, we'll all grow together and become more and more peaceful. It really is about an intentional life. If you don't intend your life to go in a certain direction, it will just go with the wind. So uh, the world will try to push you around and your thoughts will too. So if you don't take conscious control of your thoughts, accept them, accept everything as it is in the present moment, but you have to direct it a certain amount. Um, you know, your life is like a boat and it will just crash in the rocks it'll sink it'll tip over but if you have the right supplies you have a life uh, raft you have life preservers and most importantly you have a sail so you're actually intending to go in a particular direction um, this will lead you to where you want to go so you don't have to be a victim anymore um, you can take conscious control of your life and really uh, make some real progress in, in your life and and don't expect somebody to do it for you No God or uh, spiritual evolution or evolution of consciousness is going to do anything for you um, You have to work the Buddha's last words were um, Strive on with diligence. He said the teachings of that. I've left are your um, are your guide and Be a lamp unto yourself your own feelings uh, your own thoughts are your guide. If they're not peaceful, you need to look into them and see what's actually happening. Because unless you look into your mind, you'll never be able to see what's actually going on and running your life. So you can actually, when you start to look into it and see it, then you can actually let it go. Because it's not until you see things um, clearly um, and find a place of peace in seeing them so there's no fear surrounding it that you can actually start to let things go and then your life becomes more joyful becomes more free and you can really start to help others so that's one of the other benefits of well-being and peace is you can help others with their well-being and peace and that's what this world really needs um, so thank you so much I love you have a wonderful day and uh, I really look forward to in uh, continuing this journey with you on YouTube and in life and I wish you great happiness Thank you so much for watching.